Lights out. Yo, you already know who it is. It's myself, King Jones, with the pod father. It's another episode of the football pull up, the Arsenal pull up. Go for the nah, <laughs> Yo, so we're, we're... Huh? I can't even hear you. I can't hear you. It's a gunners. Can you hear me? So we're just talking about everything right now before the World Cup. You know, watch out for us. We've got something big coming. We've got big news coming. We've got um, you know, a little channel we might be linking up with for the World Cup and for future times. But you'll see us when you see us. See you know what I'm saying? And we'll make make sure you subscribe and like. And we've seen the subscribers going up and now. We really appreciate it, guys, watching all our videos. Make sure you watch everything we do. You know, what I mean, the great debates, the hot topics, the music sleepers. We go all out for there, and I'm putting up new content every day. So respectful. I had a video that was uh, setting the streets on fire. That's that's what the streets. <laughs> yeah, make sure you uh, um, that video about catering and and uh, raise for men. Yeah, it's a very very interesting video. Uh, a lot of good points were made. Yeah, I mean, yeah loads of points were made. You know what I mean? The, the titles are inflammatory, but that's just to draw you in. But the topic and how we talk about it, you know, is always commendable, respectable. We do it properly. But yeah, let's talk about. It. We're gonna straight go into you know talk about Chelsea right now. Is mm. Hogwarts exploding, and what can Harry Potter do to save it? <laughs> What's going on? That game against Newcastle, you know, I was speaking to you about it yesterday. <laughs> that game against Newcastle, is it because you guys got dominated? Do you look at like Newcastle a superior team at the moment because they're just flying? They're probably the most in, one of the most informed teams outside of Arsenal, or do you look <laughs> at it as like a massive issue? The thing is, it's worrying because obviously the Newcastle thing is not the Newcastle thing is not. Um, it's not a flash in the pan. Like this goes to like January last year. Like they bought one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it just so happens. That, okay, so our last three games uh, have been against the three, I'd say probably form teams in the league. Yeah, mm-hmm. so uh, Newcastle, Arsenal, and, and Man City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are the teams you want you want to be facing when when you're going through a bad uh, run of form. You mm-hmm. know, sometimes it's just timing and stuff, but. I think what was more scary about that Newcastle game is that you look at their squad mm-hmm. and look at how and like how yeah I mean like how how are they dominating a game against Chelsea like this? I mean one we, we have a bad record at, at uh, mm-hmm. Newcastle like we never we never play well when, when we go there it was always draws or we lose I can't remember I can't remember last time we, we won at that ground and this goes back to like Jogba Lampard um, Lampard time but. Uh, yeah, it was just so negative, you know. Like we were so we were getting this young progressive manager who's always going to attack and be on the front foot and forward thinking. You know, like he used to take his bright inside to Man City and try and dominate possession and be on the ball. Take his bright inside to Liverpool, press them. You know, oh, like, no. and, yeah, he beat us a few times. We're just not seeing any of that at uh, Chelsea so far. You know, well, me... like, yeah, go on. Yeah, so so when you're watching it yesterday, your biggest concern, so. From the games you've seen Potter be involved in the last three Premier Game Premiership games against you know the big the big teams, did he always select for you the best eleven, and did he put in the best formation out of the players that were available, or do you think he did make mistakes in terms of selection? I, I think he definitely made mistakes. One, we, we've seen three different elevens, uh, pretty much uh, uh, in all three different all three games. Is that excited? Is that kind of stuff? Zach started against Man City, and okay. I thought he had a. I thought Pulisic had a good game, mm-hmm. but the bench for for this it, ma- it makes no sense to me. Yeah, you know I mean, um, uh, playing Gallagher up front made no sense to me. Uh, you know, don't get me wrong; he hasn't been helped by injuries. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, like, uh, there's a lot of re- revision. It's like ah, oh, Tuchel would have done this, Tuchel would have done that. But even Tuchel himself struggled when um, Chilwell and James got injured. Like people forget, like we, we were top of the table uh, Christmas, I think. Yeah, and you know. Uh, ended up third and like almost like 20 points behind uh, Man City coming out of the season so I don't know I don't know I, I'm just uh, I, I wasn't too fussed about it because I was still saying good things in the Champions League I was seeing mm-hmm. good performances against Milan uh, second game against Milan we were lucky because I think tomorrow he got sent off like yeah, first yeah. 20 minutes and that pretty much like you know changed the game or whatever because we could just sit back and just uh, you know hit them on the counter um, but yeah I don't know. The, the the most the most like it was I think the Brighton game is the one that that, that really sparked off this whole you know need where people are talking like oh maybe go oh, maybe he's not the right guy da, 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 you know yeah. and I think that was his that was his first defeat you know but it's been full but then I was like oh let's not panic let's not panic 
but then two more defeats. Yeah, you know I mean, and defeats where the performances are bad. And, and and the thing is, this is a fan base. They they won't admit it, but one of the reasons that they're frustrated with Potter is they've been watching a lot of rubbish football for like a year now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that goes back to their their guy, their Messiah, uh, you know. So people are just fed up. You know, and and there's no and his his press conference. You can do a lot with your press conferences. You're behind the scenes, the way you talk and carry yourself. I, I think there's, there's a certain swagger that certain, certain managers have. Yeah, that give you that confidence. Yeah, I mean like Mourinho, uh, you know, like a, a lot, a lot Guardiola. of like, Guardiola, Klopp. Mm-hmm. They, they have a way of talking about you confidence they, when they're losing. It's like, okay, just trust me. We're, we're, we're doing this, we're doing that, yeah. I mean, or speaking in a way with that the fans can understand, so like pointing out things that the fans agree with and all that. But he, he after the game, he's like, Oh, yeah, we gave it our all. And I, <laughs> is that, and I, like, Let me ask, is it concerning that you guys are below Liverpool at this point, or is that not really you didn't really care where Liverpool are? No, I because I, I think I think Liverpool are one, have one of the best squads in, in the league, so. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Liverpool can easily go, go on a run and shoot right back up to top two, top three, or whatever. Um, yeah, and Liverpool has finished ahead of us for the last how many years? I, I don't really look at them. Mm. You know, it's more the fact that Man United are passing us, uh, mm. Brighton are passing us, uh, Newcastle, New- Tottenham. You know, like teams that have been nowhere, nowhere mm. near us. Uh, you know, for for a long time, all of a sudden, uh, just going past us, and it's looking like even mm. after spending. Than uh, I think it was 207 yeah. mil in the summer. It looks like we're gonna have to go big again in January. What was so like ready? What I, what I think is my what I think about Chelsea. The biggest concerns that I have is mm. I look at it like a couple of things. I think obviously that two shell sacking was very ambiguous. The fans took it. It was very ambiguous. The fans were very up in the air about. It. A lot of fans didn't want it to be sacked. Some did. But overall, it was seen as a very, very grey area. It didn't look like... It didn't necessarily look like the season was definitely over. It looked like they sacked him just before he showed that yeah. there was no chance of it turning around. So mm-hmm. the fans that are on his side will look at it like, oh, he would have not done what Potter done because he would have turned it around. Because I look at it like the equivalent... I try to try and um, look at it in a similar way to how maybe social was sacked uh, last season or, uh, I mean, uh, Emery was sacked. I feel like when Emery was sacked to Arsenal, it was done. Like, as in, they gave him enough game time. I think he was sacked just before December. He, they, there was nothing more he could do. He wasn't getting the tune out of the players. Then after they sacked him, they didn't give Arteta the job straight away. They actually gave it to a caretaker in Lundberg for four games. And so he do. And then when the club wasn't winning under Lundberg, it was completely done. The season was basically over. Then they gave it to him. But the problem mm. with Potter was that they, I felt like maybe they sat too shot too early where there was a part of the season to save. And then they almost hired Potter with the intention of, oh, maybe you can just carry the form from Brighton straight into this team. And the thing with a manager like Potter is as good as he might be, yeah, I would say 10%, maybe 20, 10% of managers who haven't managed at this top level go from mid table and they just hit the ground running. The majority of the managers, they need time because I don't care what people say. Playing two games a week, yeah, for most managers, is a completely different scale. Having mm-hmm. everyone analyze your tactics on a different level, having a different training regime, being in the Champions League, everyone watching you 24-7 when you have is completely different. So I look at it like if you hire a hire potter for me, I, I I always believed that it meant that this season was over. And I we know that 99% of Chelsea fans were never believing this season was over. They believed no matter what manager comes in, we want to try and win a trophy this season, we want to try and get top four. So I think when you hire a manager like Potter, it's not necessarily saying the season's over in terms of you won't do nothing, but the expectations are out the window. It's about trying to get good football, trying to get some chemistry and try and get a tune out of someone. I felt mm. like if you guys wanted to get top four and possibly get into winning something, Poch was your guy. Poch has the experience of winning, you know, PSG. Poch has the experience in the Premier League. Poch has the experience in the Champions League. He was the guy. He's a bet, for my opinion, I think he's a better manager with a better track record, but he just wasn't in favor. So I feel like yeah. hiring Pot- Potter when they're not going to, the board aren't going to stand behind him and say, because with Arteta, let's be real, the fans, we wanted him out last season. A lot of fans wanted him out. Yeah, mm. but the back the board backed him and said, "Nah, he's over. He's overachieving. We just want him to be in and amongst the best of the rest." So the board mm. has to come out and say to the fans, "This season's over. Next year, you know what I mean?" So yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think it's it's a, it's a lot to do with our history. Like mm. we're, we're used to being at the top table. You mm. know what I'm saying, Filipino. You know what I mean? Like, oh, who's the best manager in Europe? Uh, come through, come, come, mm. come through, come, come through. 
through uh, Jose, mm. come through Larry, come through this one, come through them. And, and now you're asking guys to be patient and guys are asking you, so what's the benefit of having Graham Potter? Yeah. Like what? what what's the benefit <laughs> of in four years? Like, like, yeah, in which, if somebody said, oh, guarantee in three, four years, you're challenging, yeah, but mm. you're going to be winning somewhere, wherever. Then, yeah, then, yeah. then you could, you can argument. But well, if it's like, oh, yeah, then it's like, Mm, I don't know, especially with this amount of money spent. The difference between this guy mm. and, and, and our Arteta situation mm. is the money. Mm. Yeah, is the money like this? This mad amounts of money being spent. Like, what? What about to spend? Probably what Arteta spent mm-hmm. in his forty day in, in one season. Well, well, also not yeah. just that. Obviously, you guys probably have you had better squad that, that Arteta took over. I would also argue that Tuchel got you guys to finals last year. Didn't you get to a final last year? He won the championship. Yeah, but- yeah, you won the you won the Champions League with this team. So, and yeah. what what I'll be fair to Chelsea fans is that Chelsea fans, I would say, only is it Madrid? It might be only Madrid, really. But Chelsea fans yeah. literally have a history of managers coming in halfway through the season and winning. That's not a thing. That's never happened to Arsenal, Man United. No one really gets hired now. Like, even Tottenham, people are not getting hired and just winning. Man United. I mean, Chelsea have won the Champions but, League. But, yeah. Funny you should say that because I have a sneaky thing for the Champions League this year. You know. Mm-hmm. Sneaky, mm-hmm. sneaky. But listen, we, we got we got Dortmund, who I think are very beatable. We could easily get the uh, club Bruges. I don't see I don't see Paul winning the Champions League. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you didn't you didn't see Di Matteo winning it either. But yeah, I mean, no, no, it's I possible. But it, it, but he had a Di Matteo had a better squad. But um, what I'd say is that obviously you've had because obviously you've had managers. You've had Di Matteo win the Champions League. You've had Benitez come in halfway through the season win Europa League and the League Cup. I think you've had Tuchel win the FA. I mean, win the what's it called win the Champions, Champions League. League. You've had other man he didn't come in and do a good job. So because you guys are so used to having managers come in halfway through the season. You're not like, it's not normal like Arsenal or uh, Ragnar, um, Ragnar last season with Man United where you're like, oh, let's just try and see what we can do. The fans almost are like, we won stuff with worse managers. So we expect you, Potter, to do something this season. And because he's not impressing you with the performances or the results, Chelsea fans are like, eh, we'll cut our losses on him and we'll bring in Poch. And it's also, let's be real, it's also about the managers breathing down your neck. If there's no good managers around, then yeah, yeah. sure. But Poch is a manager that people rate to an extent, and he'd die for the job. I think personally. You see, but that, that's what's so annoying because mm. I wish I believed in this manager. Because if I believed him, I could argue. I, yeah. could, I could argue. Do you ever believe in him? I never I believe. look at club, whatever. But even I don't believe. I don't believe. Never believe in him. I, I don't believe it. When I, when I really like stop stop and. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Not not try and take like a devil's advocate position. I just I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know where this where this club is going. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know where. Because me, I've always think, but but the thing is the thing about it is this. Yeah, you have an owner the way we have, and they're, apparently they're already briefing like they're ready to spend massive amounts in January or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my thing is this: if you get in good players. I don't know, yeah, forget the manager. Those those guys, those guys can carry you to that top yeah. or they can carry you to that, uh, yeah, cool top. that yeah. But is who the fuck are you gonna get in January? Like mm-hmm. like which which top which top teams are lining their presence? So you're gonna end up getting mm-hmm. and Cuckoo's a top player, I think. Pretty, yeah, yeah, but uh, is is Leipzig letting him go in January? Because you've got, you got a clause, isn't it? They're letting him go regardless. You know, yeah, but apparently we we're buying him for the summer. Oh yeah. okay. But they're gonna keep him for the year. They're gonna, because they're in Champions League as well. Yeah, so they're not gonna let their best player, wherever. Uh, Rafael Leal, Zaha, who, Zaha. Uh, no, no, Rafael Leal, who we love, Top yeah, love I mean, yeah. they're not gonna let him go. No, yeah, no, I mean, no, like, they're not in January, no, no chance. Yeah, so, so who are we getting? Oshiman so, at Napoli, Woo! love him. None of these guys are let, have been let go. <laughs> what about Tony? We did, Tony did, like, I think Brentford would sell Tony this summer. I don't, I don't think they wouldn't, I would think they would. Boy, I think they were selling for the right money, hundred percent. Yeah, that stupid, like 80, 90 million, something crazy like that. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. And then, like, you just want to, you want to wait for the summer, innit? You want to wait for the summer where the, the, the landscape is wide, there's loads of players available, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, you know I mean, I just, I'm not, I'm not optimistic right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the World Cup could be the best thing that happened though. Because you, you could undiscover I mean? gem, undiscover gem in there, and pick someone up. The thing is, you. Yeah. 
The thing is, I would argue, you look at who's around. I It depends what you're looking at. I think that if you're looking at centre mid, there are guys in the Premier League. I think Neves is good enough to go to you guys. I think you guys could fight for Tillersman if you really wanted him, but I don't think you guys are going to go for him. What, what, what could help is, all of a sudden, January comes, yeah, Kante is back. Yeah. Rich James, uh, Rich James is back. You're welcome. Too well. Yeah, all of a sudden you look like a whole, a whole different team. Yeah, so, so that, that could, that could be what changes uh, the situation going forward, and then maybe add like one extra player in midfield or one. Or one why why does Zachari- Zachari- is Zachariah? Am I saying it right? Mm, right. Yeah. Why is he getting no game time? He's the only kind of DM in your team right now. That's fit. Yeah, that doesn't fancy him, innit? You know what I mean, so. He's playing, he's playing Georgina every uh, every uh, every game pretty well, much. Actually, I caught his yeah. injury. Serious injury. I mean, what well, I I mean, um, Kepa. Kepa's injured. Serious injury. Yeah, but it was, it was back January. Back January. He was playing well. He was. He playing very well. That's what I'm saying. Like, like we had injuries that just out of nowhere. Like people, just, people forget that when they when they talk about uh, the, the 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 form just. We had like big injuries up and down. Hope is and Mendy. So if everyone's know. back, Reese is back, Fafana's back, Kepa's back, Kante's back. Does that make yeah. a difference? I think that they're, they're good enough to make some sort of difference. It's massive difference because then, then when you rotate, so you 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 both play, the drop in quality is not massive. Mm-hmm. Uh, if if you didn't want to play Aspi at all, you know Fafana can do everything he can do. But but what Kante does is and what what he does more than everybody else is he allows you to press. He's a one man pressing machine. Like he literally does, you know. When he's at his best, you just wind him up and let him go. I'm um, gonna press the whole, you know, front and so back, you, wherever. So right now, you sack. Po- you go right now. Pochettino wants the job. Yeah, you're going into the World Cup. Do you sack him, or Potter, or you keep him? I, 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 w- I, w- I would bring Pochettino because I prefer Pochettino in the first yeah. place. So I, I would only okay. Pochettino. But <clears throat> I have to be realistic and look at it from the owner's point of view. Like they, they don't want to look oh, stupid. Exactly, yeah. They could get a five-year contract. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get a five year contract for 12 million a year. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. yeah. I feel 50 million. Yeah, that they'd have to pay him for fa- for what? For for two, what, three months' work. What's cra- what's crazy is that before before we go off, but like I always felt like with the Potter thing, it wasn't a desperate signing. So I felt like you guys could have hired Pochettino, yeah? And let's say for some reason it was terrible. You could have came, but I don't I never saw Potter going to any better team than Chelsea at the end of the year. I never saw Man City coming in for him. I didn't see Man United, you know, if anything goes wrong with Ten Hag going from yeah. him, going from I feel like I he would have stayed in the same place and he would have been dying for the Chelsea club, whether it was now, next year, whether he's with England, it wouldn't have mattered. I think he would have died for that job. I mean, listen, it's it's not just us. A lot of people have overlooked Pochettino for whatever for whatever reason, he's got a lot of stink around his name right now. Like yeah. for the PSG thing. As as not what as not you know left him in in the best life, and you guys hired two shots. I don't understand what the craziness. Is. Yeah, yeah, but that, but that was but that was um that was different regime, yeah. And two 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 shots like, just come off getting Pierce to a Champions League final. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, he stuck was a little bit higher. Any Chelsea fan regrets hiring two shots. I don't. It, you'd be crazy. Any Chelsea fan say no, I regret hiring two shots. Nuts. Mm. You. Let, let me, I, I think I think Pochettino is a good manager. I think I think if you look at the managerial track record, uh, apart from winning the Champions League, I think it's pretty it's pretty similar between uh, Pochettino. And the, if anything, Pochettino might have better because he's done it. He's done it at more clubs. Yeah, you know I mean Southampton mm-hmm. uh, took them to, to higher levels. To Tottenham to their high. Yeah, I, like he did better. He did better at Tottenham mm-hmm. probably than what uh, Tuchel did at um, uh, Dortmund. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah, it's, it's arguable. Pro- like up yeah. up until when he gets to Chelsea and wins that Champions League, they were probably neck and neck. Yeah. And what's crazy is I'll probably name this video like Chelsea. Chelsea are mad. Pochettino disrespected or something. But I just I just thought the the Pochettino disrespect was crazy. And I, and you know what? If I can find some clips of the pundits talking about it, the pundits, which is mm. always from the beginning, Pochettino, oh, oh, Potter over. I remember saying Potter uh, Pochettino hasn't got no clout in the bank. Potter, Potter. All, all the same pundits have turned on him. You know, if, if, mm. I, I was. I was, I was sending a clip of uh, Gary on, on the overlap, whatever's in it. Yeah. You know, he, he looks like he's not. It doesn't fit his clothes. He doesn't, he doesn't look up to it. You know, he's different. But every one of these guys was saying he was the guy. He's the da, da, da. and I said from the beginning, it's not that I didn't mm-hmm. like him. I thought he was a good manager. What I felt like, and this is the truth, yeah, I felt like that he was getting the hype that better managers deserve more than him. He deserves it. He's the man of the moment. I'm not saying he fantastic job with Brighton. 
But I mm. felt like the other guys in their moment, yeah, and I'm not saying he was a giant killer. He's done stuff like beat certain clubs and that, that's what you want to give him, the giant killer title. But I feel like other English managers did mm. a bit more than him, played better for whatever, and they didn't get the respect. I felt Bournemouth, I've always felt, before Eddie Howe got you remember, I always spoke about Bournemouth, whether the <laughs> Arsenal job might have been too big for him, at I always thought that Eddie Howe was a fantastic manager. Not the best mm. manager of all time, not well, but I thought that him to get Bournemouth up for the football he played with Bournemouth, even though he went down, Martinez went down, tons of managers have gone down. He was a great mm. manager for what he did. I always felt like Leicester, who are starting to go on a good run now, Rogers. I always thought that like Rogers was a great man, a good manager. The job he done at mm. Liverpool for an extent, the job he won the FA Cup with Leicester, the fact he got him fifth twice, like yeah. how can you not doubt it? But Potter's better than those guys, it just never mm. makes sense to me. It never mm. he's better in the moment, but he's not a better manager. Now, he could turn this around. We could be wrong. Like you said, January could come round. Kante could get fit. James could get fit. Mm-hmm. Chilwell could get fit. He could bring in one or two players and suddenly the football's out of this world. What mm-hmm. I will be fair to Potter is, let's be real, right? With the injuries that he's got and the players that he's got, the squad isn't great. You know what I'm saying? Like, the players that he's mm-hmm. got to select from, it's not great. There's a lot of guys where you're like, mm, very average players. And I think the Chelsea fans aren't being fair. Because a lot of men, if, if Conte came in tomorrow at his best, and by the way, Conte, mm-hmm. Shout to Conte, because I think they're giving Tottenham a lot of flack, but they're winning. That's the key word. Okay, how they're playing, Chelsea fans will take it. To be third, what, fourth, and just winning games, it doesn't matter, yeah? If Conte was there, the first thing he would say is, I need 200 million. So any manager, top manager comes in, wants 200, 300 million. So I do think that people need to be fair and understand that. Because Chelsea fans, I heard them complain, the squad isn't good enough. Yeah, you want points, mm. what miracles. So it can't be both. Is the squad good enough for him to do something, or is the squad not good enough for him to do something? You mm. know what I mean? What do you think? Is the squad good enough to do something or is the squad not good enough? Um, like we're good enough for top four. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's good enough for top four, but uh, not more than that. Currently, yeah, right I mean, now, with this squad, the injuries you have, you think you're still good enough for top four? No. If we, if, we don't, if we don't get those injuries sorted, I, I don't think we're good enough for top four now. I think, I think my United, at the moment, are better than us. I think Spurs are better than us. I think Liverpool are better than us. I, mean, uh, I think Newcastle are playing uh, better than you guys, but I don't think they have a better team. No, I, I, I didn't include Newcastle, but I think my United, uh, awesome. my United, Tottenham, and uh, Liverpool, and I know yeah. that's that's what, like four clubs already, and obviously Man City. That's yeah. five. So really, well, they're, well, they're probably the sixth best team at the moment. Yeah, so it's possible. Fourth is possible. It's not. It's not even probable. It's just possible at the moment. Until yeah. until those guys come back and not just come back, but like come back well. And don't get injured again. Yeah, because okay. that, that's what with Rich James last year. He came back, he played for a couple of months and then got is injured Rich James again. suddenly injury pro now? No, he's just big injuries again. No, no, it's, it's definitely something to look, to look out for because uh, I think the the most he's played is uh, 30 games. Mm-hmm. So he always misses about seven, eight games every season. Yeah. Uh, it's looking like. But but I, I won't say he's... I don't know how I say if he's injury prone. Yeah, he's he means... Uh, yeah, just, you know... Like a lot, a lot of players pick up injuries, isn't it? Like, like I, I won't say it's injury prone, no. Yeah. But uh, I think, I think if you are you're averaging thirty games a season fit out of a thirty-eight game season, that's all right. Yeah, you know I mean, that's all and right. The, and the last question I'll ask you is: Do you think the signings you made? Let me run through them. Are uh, not good enough? Not as good as you thought they were? And how much accountability do you think they should take for their own performance, or do you think it's based on the manager misplaying and playing out of position? Mm-hmm. Let me run through some of them with you quickly. Let's say Sterling, yes. I would say uh, I, I always had a little bit of reservations about yeah, him. You went, like, you went on board with him. Then, as, as we're getting him, like, is he past his best or whatever? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been good. I, I think a lot, a lot of that is the my the, the Potter, Potter hasn't used him in the way I would like him to be used. Uh, you show him? All that sort of stuff. Even to even to Tuchel didn't use him the way I would like him. Yeah. I like him. I like him to be played in the position he's, been, he's always yeah. been playing. Playing him almost as a striker. Yeah. Inside forward. So yeah, he was getting goals, but but he still wasn't the same guy. Like I want to see him skip skip past his guy on the wing. Yeah, you know, cut and get shots of cross. None of that. That's what I want to see him. Uh, Koulibaly has definitely been a disappointment. Uh, you know, I I was I was thinking this was another. How how Tiago Silva, I even mean, like another Tiago Silva masterstroke. Yeah, I mean, like like somebody who, yeah, everybody everybody has rated and uh, you know we just snapped him up at the right time. Yeah, he's looking uh, very. Cucurella. Very, 
uh, Cucurella, he, he's been good. He's been good. He's, he's, he's been good. But at the same time, has he been the, the level we thought he'd be? Yeah. I say, yeah, I'm saying, I say, no, no. Yeah, he hasn't been like, but like last year, they were saying he's one, one of the best uh, left backs in the, in the Prem. He hasn't, he hasn't been that. Uh, Aubameyang, no, he, he, he hasn't. Uh, but but him, he's he's more like you know you know the type of striker he is, and if you can't find him, then then what's the point of bringing him in? Like, he's not he's not gonna whatever. I I, I thought he started off very I thought he started off very good like the first month or so. Mm-hmm. Scored against AC Milan, scored against Fulham. Um, Fofana? Scored against Crystal Palace. Fofana, uh, he really played or that game? Nah, did he look good? Angel like right away. So I can't. Did he look good when he played? Nah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't look good to me. Yeah, yeah. he didn't look good. Yeah. What about that new guy? Before you go, that new guy from Aston Villa. Does he played any games? Uh, Carney. He played one game. He played one game. So I can't. I can't, I can't judge him at the moment. Yeah. yeah, another injury. But I can't judge him. Eighteen years old. He's only, he's only played like half an hour or something like that. Yeah. And the most disappointing guy, Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gallagher definitely hasn't lived up to. Uh, what, Crystal what, Palace. what at uh, Crystal Palace? Yeah, yeah so. but yeah, that's, that's a, like, like, like it just it does yeah. that 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 pretty much sums up our season. Okay. Mainly that, but all that and all those new players, and I can't even point to one that's exceeded expectations. Okay, but yeah. but yeah, so just to end, I would say, oh yeah, so just one more comment. I just want to say, so overall, if I'd shown you the window that you guys have had before, just say I just mm. started summer, I would have said I, these are the players. Like big, I would have like challenged with the title. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously that's been Podfather, it's been myself, King Jones Make sure guys you like, share and subscribe We'll look out for new videos, we've got something new Coming up soon guys it's gonna, I can't even say nothing like, I don't. We don't want to talk about it, like, we're just not going to talk about it You know what I mean, it's not Arsenal at uh, the top of the league It's a surprise, but it's a good one You know what I mean? We, we move in silence, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah um, If I speak, I'm in trouble yeah, it's big, a big, big, big trouble. That's what you heard. You heard it from Podfather. It's Mourinho to Chelsea, back to Chelsea soon. Don't worry. So he's leaving. Room. I take him. Come back, Jersey. He's, he's Come bringing back. Abraham. He's bringing Abraham. But yeah, make sure, guys, you like, share, and subscribe. Um, and if you do, then Banjo will give away that Boss shirt he's wearing as a gift. <laughs> yeah, it's been myself, King Jones, the football pull up. It's been the Podfather. You know, make sure you check out our page, non stop content, and we out. Peace. Peace.